Got a mama cow, Dusty. Oh. Me and my wife came out here. Did not expect for this to happen. Because Big Joe and Dunbar are together, we had to get them separated. Dusty! When Marissa and I arrived at the ranch this morning, the first thing we did was go check the animals. One of the first things we saw when we pulled in the pasture was Dunbar all by himself, slowly walking around and limping on that front right shoulder. I knew it was gonna be a tough task for us to try to get Dunbar away from Big Joe and into another pasture. Hot and heavy in the middle of breeding season, and the recent events with Dunbar and Big Joe in the same pasture, we were worried about Dunbar and really needed to get the Dunbar herd separated from the Big Joe herd. If you didn't catch the previous video, here's how we got in this situation. While I was gone in Canada, my mom and Kevin did a herd check and this is what they saw. Here is the dominant behavior during prime time of breeding season. Big Joe is doing his best to keep Dunbar from coming into the herd. Because a fight must have already taken place between the two and Dunbar came out in second place, Big Joe kept Dunbar from entering the herd and getting close to any of the females. They were all for Big Joe. As Marissa and I pulled into pasture three, with the Dunbar and Haas herd meshed in with the Big Joe herd, Marissa and I realized this is the largest herd we've ever had, incidentally. Minus the situation that we were in, we wanted to check our red dogs and see if we had any new babies. If you guys remember the cow that lost her calf here recently, Bell Star. Here are some positive signs of her being in heat and being escorted by Big Joe. But a routine herd check turned into opportunity. With the situation at hand, I saw a chance to maybe get the herds separated. Okay. After doing our normal herd check, Marissa and I pulled into one of the corners of our property. This is the same corner where Dunbar and Big Joe came face to face and the gates were torn down. When we pulled into this corner, some of the Haas herd females, which is our South Dakota and Wolverine two-year-old females, some of them followed us. And so what we noticed was a lot of these two-year-old females from the Haas and Dunbar herd started gathering in this corner, and I saw the opportunity. Because they had been in the halfway nine acres, which is the last paddock before going to the burn unit, they wanted back into their familiar pasture. So, I started gate cutting them. Got a mama cow, Dusty. Oh. Unfortunately, the rest of the herd showed up, and this is where it got tricky. This two year old group of females has about 24 females in it. At this point, I've got about half of them in the nine acres where I needed them to go. Some of the other two-year-olds that needed to go in the same paddock wanted to come through, but the dominant females get in the way. The one that was challenging me the most was the boss cow number 32. 
She's got a look in her eye that always makes me nervous. What do you need me to do? I've got a paddle in my toolbox there. Dusty? How many did you get? That's quite a few though. Yeah. Hey, they Charlie. all want to go together, they know. Because we had one large herd now, it was gonna be difficult to try to sort out the two-year-olds with all the herd trying to come to the gate. <laughs> hey, hey, Charlie. In situations like this, there's a lot of patience. There's a lot of give and take and wait until you have the right moment and let the animals decide themselves. Well, no, I, guess she can go. I was gonna say, I'd send her. She's been with them. Yeah, there was what, three or four of ours that were with them, wasn't there? Yeah. Now there's Bobby. How many are left? Oh, there she goes, Dusty. Yeah, but which one is it that, which is the jumper that always wants to be back where Big Joe is? I think probably one of them. How many are left? I can't even. We were able to get a large portion of them at the corner gate. Headed into late morning at this point, the herd is moving towards the shade to get out of the heat. There's one more chance and one more gate to give us an opportunity to catch some more. are going to cause us the biggest problems, right? Yeah. Like, there's one right back there. Is that the one we raised? Right there. No, that's the South Dakota. Uh -huh. She can go. Look, I've got their attention a little bit here. The, the older ones are messing us up some. They're going to block the others from getting in there. I don't how many are left, hon? There's ten maybe? That herd had twenty six in it. It's gonna block us. Yeah, I don't like Yeah, I don't like her, Dusty. Get in the truck, please. I can rattle a bag if you need me to. Where's that bag at, hon? Huh? Where's the bag at?
Look at these two. She's in a good spot. Charlie's sitting next to her. Oh, really? Yeah, I can't see her. They're both just chilling in the mud. Come on, Charlie. Charlie. Had a little scare with Charlie as she was coming back to the truck. She got caught underneath some of the cows and got spooked and fled off. Watch her, Dusty. As me and the 32 cow came face to face once again, I looked up on the hill and what I thought was a huge surprise was another opportunity. Slowly coming over the hill was Dunbar. It didn't take Big Joe long to meet Dunbar halfway to cut him off away from the main herd. Nervous at the same time, afraid of what could happen again, and Big Joe and Dunbar getting a fight again, or Dunbar get hurt again, I thought this was our chance to try to separate Dunbar from Big Joe. So I sent Marissa out to the main herd to act like she had some feed and rattle a bag to try to draw some attention towards her. Knowing that Dunbar had pretty much been kicked out of the herd because of Big Joe's dominance, I had a feeling that Dunbar would want to get away from Big Joe. Crazy eyes. With Big Joe protecting the herd and closely watching Dunbar, Dunbar slowly approached the gate where I was located. This was our moment of truth to hopefully get Dunbar back with his herd. Sometimes you gotta have a little luck. Luckily, one of the heifers I still needed to catch walked in front of him, which helped show him that he could go into the nine acre pasture with the other females. Hey Dunbar. Hey buddy, proud of you. Hope you're doing okay, man. Holy smokes. Me and my wife came out here and uh, did not expect for this to happen. We saw, uh, we had to, because Big Joe and Dunbar are together, we had to get them separated. Yeah, I got him! But we came out here this morning and Marissa and I, hey, bring that truck over here. And uh, we needed to get some animals separated, basically. We needed to get the Haas and Dunbar herd and those 26 females out of pasture uh, three, which is the 40 acres, into this nine. And I thought, let's try it. Let's gate cut them. And sure enough, uh, it's funny that herd grew up together. They wanted to be back together. And uh, we've been out here for at least an hour and a half, uh, slowly letting them make those decisions i've been gate cutting but um and then dunbar comes over the hill all by himself because he's been singled out with this whole situation and uh 
Dunbar comes through and is back with the Haas herd. And I got Haas as well, so my wife is awesome. All right, I'm gonna shut this before anything else happens. You got the cat? Charlie went on a... And Charlie came down here with us as well, jumped out and had some fun with the bison. We had to go get Charlie. You got Charlie? I got Charlie. Oh, good. Glad. Jackie. Jackie's hanging out in the mud. You're good, hon. Now that we got the Dunbar and the Haas herd separated with the two-year-old females, we still had work to do. We needed to move the Big Joe herd to pasture two to create some space between the two herds, which means there has to be a pasture between them. Eleanor was leading the pack for a minute. All right, Marissa's pulled into pasture two. Hopefully we get a good follow here. Oh yeah. Started going after some grass there. Here come the rest of them. And Eleanor. You see Charlie. Hmm? Okay, Eleanor's in. Big Joe's right there. Well, I'll call it having a little luck. Um, I guess that's what it is. I don't know. When Marissa and I came to uh, do the herd checks, we had no strategy to catch them. Um, we just knew that uh, we were kind of still thinking about it and really what we were gonna do to try to get Dunbar and those females and Haas back to their own herd into another pasture away from the Big Joe herd. So it was kind of fun, but not fun to see the large herd we had uh, for a little while, for a couple of days at least. Sometimes you got a feeling that, hey, maybe let's try something. Let's, let's try this by, by their behavior uh, I, I kind of could start seeing that those females, those two-year-old females were grouping up together. And, uh, you know, luckily these animals are so social. Uh, I've been through this before where they want to get back together and they want to be together. And uh, in this situation, we were able to, to group off and gate cut a big portion of those. And they had been in that paddock before in that nine-acre pasture. So there were some things that were going our way. Then got Haas through, that was going to be another challenge because he had nothing to do with Big Joe. And then Dunbar coming over the hill, you know, and then Big Joe meeting him and uh, getting a little bit nervous at that point. But luckily, everybody got back together and nobody had been injured any more than what we saw. It worked out for Marissa and I, and I appreciate my wife's help. You know, I don't like, um, it makes me very uncomfortable. That's why I keep her around the truck and I can kind of get out and, and be a little bit more mobile on foot. Um, and, you know, see, Cora would have been nice in situations like this, um, having a horse instead of me being on foot. Um, I, and sometimes it, it works out for me, and it did today, but I like to keep Marissa in the truck, and she helped me out a bunch today. Um, so I want to thank her for her help. But what's going to happen next is now that we got the Big Joe herd moved up to the pasture too, that means there's 40 acres in between pasture two and the nine acres um, between the Dunbar herd and the Big Joe herd. And so uh, we we have got to hustle and finish this fence because what that means for next for the big, what that means next is so we can continue our rotational grazing is we've got to move the big, we've got to move the Dunbar herd back through the burn unit. They're gonna pass through the burn unit into this beautiful hay meadow that we've been we've been working on the fence 
and uh, working hard on it with my Uncle Keith and Kevin and Marissa on it so we can get that Dunbar herd back there. With the situation at hand, we are hustling. And so that'll be right here around the corner is finishing that fence and getting them on the hay meta as soon as we can. And they'll be able to go there for a while because there's a lot of native, beautiful green grass waiting on them. So thank you guys for watching us and being a part of today's Bison Ranching. We'll see you guys soon.